Heroes of the Naval Academy, brought to you by John Singleton. These are the true stories of Naval Academy heroes who serve their country. Manning Marius Kimmel was born in Washington, D.C. on April 22, 1913. To the delight of his mother and father, their baby boy was healthy and alert, and like many parents, they gazed into their child's eyes and dreamed of what one day he might become. As Manning grew to be a toddler, it was clear to his mother, Dorothy, that her son loved nothing more than to imitate his father. When he learned to walk, he followed his father through every room of the house. The footsteps he followed were large ones. His father, husband E. Kimmel, would eventually become the commander of the Pacific Fleet at the time of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. In the same year that young Manning was born, Adolf Hitler moved to Munich, Germany to avoid arrest for evasion of military service. In Munich, Hitler supported himself like any young artist, selling his watercolors and sketches for far less than he believed they were worth. Hitler's misdirected sense of injustice was just beginning to take root. On the horizon, larger storm clouds were brewing. The First World War would soon give Adolf Hitler a vehicle to which he could totally commit himself. far removed from the roiling politics of Europe, Manning Kimmel was growing up. Washington, D.C. was a slow southern town back then. After high school, Manning made a decision to once more follow in his father's footsteps and enter the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis. At about the same time, the Imperial Japanese Navy commissioned a new advanced class of naval destroyers intended to give them command over all the world's seas. In 1935, Manning Kimmel graduated from the Naval Academy and was assigned aboard the battleship USS Mississippi. President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, issued the proclamation. Yesterday, On December 7, 1941, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, husband Kimmel was a four-star admiral in charge of the Pacific Fleet. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces. As Kimmel watched the destruction of the U.S. fleet from his office across the harbor, he recognized the impending end of his command and the end of his career. By the time America had officially joined the Allied cause in World War II, Manning Kimmel had already developed a reputation as a brave and aggressive skipper in the Pacific. When he was assigned the command of the submarine USS Robolo, it was only natural that Manning Kimmel sought to restore the family name. Vice Admiral Ralph Christie noted that Kimmel's daring in enemy waters concerned him. In the South China Sea, Kimmel repeatedly interrupted Japanese supply lines and fended off attacks by Japanese fighter planes. On July 3, 1944, Robolo attempted to intercept a Japanese battleship. Kimmel sent off a contact report, which was the last message ever received from him. On the night of July 26, two miles off the coast of Palawan Island, Robolo struck a mine and sank. An unknown number of survivors, possibly as many as seven, managed to make it ashore. Vice Admiral Christie informed husband Kimmel at the time that Manning had gone down with the ship. However, Christie confided after the war that he had received intelligence that gave a different account of the young Kimmel's death, an account which he intentionally withheld 
for the sake of the family. According to this alternative account, Manning Kimmel survived the sinking. However, a few days after the crew was captured, some American aircraft attacked Japanese installations on Palawan Island. The Japanese reportedly flew into a rage at the attack, pushed Kimmel and several other Robolo crew members into a ditch, doused them with gasoline, and set them afire. After following in the footsteps of his father for most of his life, Manning Kimmel preceded his father in death. He joined his grandfather and namesake, Major Manning Marius Kimmel of Kentucky, who served in the Confederate States Army during the American Civil War. The bonds of military service had stretched across the generations to unite the Kimmel family. Since the first submarine was commissioned in the U.S. Navy in 1900, over 4,000 men have been lost beneath the oceans and remain on what is known as eternal patrol, safeguarding the United States across vast and unknown waters. Manning Marius Kimmel died in 1944 at the age of 31 and was posthumously awarded the Silver Star, Bronze Star, and Purple Heart for his service to his country. His loving father, husband Kimmel, died at Groton, Connecticut on May 14, 1968, at the age of 86. We thank them for their service to our country.